Six year old boy presented one month following trauma. You can keep your watching handy on your hands. What will you do? Yeah, because uh, fracture neck femur was also included in morning, but this is a late presentation after one month following trauma. Answer, okay. So people are say surgically reduce and say, I'd like to ask the panel, sir. What will you do, sir? One month, one month following trauma. Sorry, I didn't see the first slide. How many days old? One month. One month? Yeah. This I don't think we, sh we should go for immediate reduction. Okay. I'm not agreeing for that. Okay. And if, we, if at all one has to do, one has to go for a surgical safe dislocation and do an osteoplasty, osteotomy and then reduce. Otherwise not. Okay. Dr. James? I, I, I suppose natural history is, we can't leave this alone, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we have to treat, right? <laughs> so there is, a, there is a surgical indication for me, okay? So therefore, I would try, uh, I mean, I, I would tell them all about possibility of uh, more um, minimally invasive thing, but ultimately, I suspect I would end up uh, surgical heat dislocation and uh, reduce uh, everything and fix, yeah. That's what I would do. Will you do the same? So I'm fortunate that I wouldn't have to do it, but I would certainly refer it to a colleague for a surgical hip dislocation approach <coughs> and sure. reduction. Sandeep, anybody wants to have any other opinion? Yeah, so it's, it's a transfacial type one slip, which is one month old, right? Yeah. It's a small six year old boy. So. We, we will have to open and fix it as accurately as possible, keeping in mind the possibility of avascular necrosis as a potential complication. Yes. And uh, there is li literature which suggests that you could do a nuclear scan and there are people who are injecting uh, ibandronate into the head after your reduction to prevent the head from collapsing. So Primary? Primarily. Okay. But if there is a chance of the avian, then we can inject that again. So, so you do a nuclear scan. If it's cold, after your reduction, probably inject a band on it okay. and hope for the best. Yes. Anybody have any other opinion? So the house says that you can reduce it either by the minimum analgesia or the uh, what was talked in the morning, Watson Jones or anterior incision or by safe surgical dislocation in that. So. Actually, tomorrow afternoon, I have one session also. Okay. Uh, I will show you how I did that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'll show you that what was done in that. That is the options. Gone for the open reduction and the smooth pin across that. And the spica was put for three months. Implant removed after three months. And the follow-up shows it's okay. And it's yes, anteriorly. Yes, anteriorly. No, no, it's not so difficult. That's one month. Surgical safe hip dislocation. Yeah, yeah it yes. surprise us sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So you're fortunate enough to have no avian and uh, hip is fine. Yes, we have to wait. It's yeah, one year is not enough, but we have to keeping in follow up in that. Ah. That's in the view, actually. It's, uh, it's not a, it's hip range of motion is fine. There is no flexion deformity on that. Yes, sir? No, we have not done surgical hip dis People are uh, worried for the blood supply. So they say it's uh, what uh, they are all following the 
then it's longer for that surgical rift to occur and reduce it. That's it is. I have an exactly similar case which after two years developed a lateral facial growth arrest. Yes, possible. To and have. it went into coxa valga. So you have to follow this up yes. for growth arrest, AVN, as well as residual dysplasia. Yeah. All can happen because he's just six years old. Yeah. So the child has to follow up to the skeletal maturity and even. The AVN can happen after even three years. It's not only the one year, two years. And growth arrest also may manifest later also. Yes. It's a very subtle growth arrest like a type 2 AVN or type 1 AVN in case of DDH. Almost same may be possible also. We'll move on to the second case. Six-year-old boy presented with the flexion type of supragondola. It was discussed in morning a great extent with the medial oblique, lateral oblique, transverse, semi-oblique. And uh, is presented after two months following injury. They are very Dr. Tarrell. Let's say the. How the range of motion he presented because the extension was restricted. He was having full flexion, but the extension was restricted, and it's having the almost the he's having flexion deformity of the 30 degree. The extension was the flexion was full, but the extension not. Yeah, that is the options. There is the initial x-rays. We could find out that. So these are the, we like to vote it. Yes, we'll have it. We'll see that. Then we'll ask the expert. Oh, there is a diversity between the leave it and open reduction. That is almost 50-50. Uh, no. Leave it and ostotomy One and later. four, that's leave and ostotomy later. Okay. Yes, sir? I will also. Okay. And, and depending on, because the deformity is in the line of the arc of motion. Excellent. So, chances of remodeling are very high. Yes. Depending on how much remodeling occur, accordingly we can plan for the ostotomy letter. Sandeep? It's a difficult choice. At 6 to 12, this is 2 months, right? Yeah. So, you could attempt a percutaneous method where you can put a periosteum elevator and try to peel off the callus and try to get a closed sort of a reduction even at two months. You could drill percutaneously, anteriorly, create some space, peel it off and then try to reduce it as best as possible and pin it. The problem is with flexion types, when you try to extend the cartilaginous solecranon keeps on hitting that uh, proximal uh, fragment. And I don't think flexion types remodel as well as extension types. Do you have any? It's fine. I don't have literature to quote that. But it's just an observation. So what what happens is that the what happens is that when you have an extension type with recurvatum, yeah. full flexion requirement for activity is lesser. They can manage with the other hand or they have functional. But when you have an extension block, they cannot work. And every time they extend their hand, it keeps on hitting. So I think it. It doesn't remodel as well. Yes, sir. What's any experience? You, you know, Sandeep, in my even in my very brave younger days, the older oldest duration is like about four to five weeks. I think two months a little bit too much to try to So so you reduce. will have to recreate the fracture controlled way by making drill holes in the front and then use a small periosteal or a freer elevator to just peel it off and try to extend as much as possible. If you're lucky and you get it, otherwise you have to go and open it. And even then, uh, that was all my experience was in extension type. I really had zero experience of uh, flexion type. a neglected flexion type, yeah. You're expert in upper limb. So, I would probably watch this for a little bit of time. I have had a couple of these that have remodeled um, and I don't think that if you've only got 35 degrees loss of flexion, I mean loss of extension, um, that this patient's definitely going to have a functional problem and so I wouldn't go and do an early osteotomy. I'd wait. Early osteotomy? I would wait. Wait. Anybody else having any different approach? Okay. Choose to leave the first option, observation. That's falling one year. Extension. How, how, how is the extension? It's extension is full now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 
So the, exactly what uh, Sir said that it is in the remodeling happened in the range of line of flexion. So do not do about the osteotomy at the very early. That is the message. We'll go on the third case. Sorry, uh, uh, can I make a comment? Can you go back to the x-ray? I think, uh, can you go back to the x-ray, the first x-ray? No, I, I think it's very important here because for a typical flexion type, usually uh, associated with a coronal vulgus deformity, and this is, case is very fortunate. So yeah. I think we should not give audience the impression that, oh, even you screw up a flexion type, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, we need to have that. We should wait for the remodeling product. This is a late presentation. It's not yeah, correct. Right. Yeah, it's not actually in the acute flexion where it's correct, correct. But it's a very fortunate, as he said, yes. very unique atypical flexion type because it does not come with a associated coronal yes. vulgus deformity. Yes, yeah. the message is very clear. The rotation and coronal plane deformity doesn't remodel, but the sagittal plane de de remodel very well. We'll go on a third case. The eight-year-old present, actually, it's a supracondylar. It's very common to have the supracondylar fracture. And he presented a following three weeks following a trauma, and it's like this is the lateral view, and that's a AP view. Can we have the We can't see that. Can we have the starts? Okay. So, 66 percentage of the people say the three weeks following that. Do you agree? <laughs> Remember why? I think I agree. <laughs> 66 people say 66 percentage of people. I don't really have enough experience okay. with, so, with something like this. <laughs> it really doesn't turn up like this. <laughs> My gut feeling is that because of the amount of shortening um, that that metaphyseal spike is much more likely to be a problem. How old was this patient? Eight. Eight. So over the age of six, there's really very little distal humeral growth remaining. And so this spike's not really going to grow away from the joint so well. I'd be pretty concerned. Open reduction? So open reduction? Yeah. Dr. James? I do it open if I have to. As I say, 10 years back, I would definitely open reduce. <laughs> but, but now, I, I'm, 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 I'll say I will leave it and osteotomy later. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yes, sir? No, I see this X-ray you are showing is the only lateral view. You are not showing if, if you yeah. see the a original X-ray, there, the there is a lot of there is a lot of coronal deformity also, yes. translation yes. as well as deformity. Some yes. element of rotation also is seen. Yes. So looking to all those factors, it requires open reduction and internal fixation. Sir, if you are planning open reduction, we are using to do shorting. Yes. I do agree. Some amount of shorting yes. from yes. Yes. This is like from posterior approach or from from posterior approach. No, from lateral approach. But we have to, if need be, there. When see, if you do shortening, there will not be any problem of triceps or any problem. But if you are not doing shortening, triceps will be coming in the way of your getting the reduction. So it is better to do a shortening of the proximal part slightly, and you will be able to achieve the reduction. Yes? Yeah, I'll do an open reduction, but I'll go from front and I'll nibble that spike off. Yes, yes. And yeah. then I'll anteriorly. And then get a facilitate a close reduction and then pin it. You explain very nice of the supracondylar fractures and very nice video on the supracondylar fracture. Three week following supracondylar fracture. Expert is. I'm very expert at waiting and watching. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the latest I have so for uh, ventured into doing it, it has, you know, ten, after 10 days, 
and I classify the late presenting are those which are mobile and those who are stiff. And the stiff ones you leave alone, but where some moment is possible, you can manipulate, put external fixator, do something and at least get a better alignment so that the amount of deformity can definitely be reduced. Mobility under anesthesia, not under anesthesia. So you, you tell the parent, take them under anesthesia. If there is mobility, then you know we have put uh, uh, you, we done some techniques which we are going to reveal only tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning, only for those who come uh, in time. So please come in time tomorrow. <laughs> Anybody have any opinion, any views? Venkat Das? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Venkat Das? Leave it. Leave it. Any other? So we'll go and see that. That's a three months. It's one year. Uh, I'd like to tell you some of the things is there. A lot of things has been told for the supracondral fracture. But the supracondral fracture in the postural medial displacement is different than the postural lateral displacement. If it comes with the postural lateral displacement and the late presented, best option is to leave it because it will remodel quite well. It's not in, even in sagittal plane as the last case, sagittal plane remodeling is quite well. Coronal remodeling doesn't happen. Rotation doesn't happen. I never say that rotation. But if you see the original view, it was actually translation. It's not about the rotation actually. If you see the, about the, so then we try to wait for that one year and it's almost quite well in that. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes, it is in little bit in flexion, but the range of motion is okay. Mile var? No, no. Straight. Yeah, somebody said that everything remodels. <laughs> Fifteen-year-old boy presented after two weeks. From audience, can anybody can say what is a fracture? It was referred as a myositis. Would you agree? Yes. It's. What is the back side? On the back of the audience. So we'll have the opinion. One, two, three, four. <laughs> no, no, we want one more opinion, uh, one more option. CT scan. Further investigation. Uh, Further investigation. Okay, we get you scan. E. <laughs> no, exact. E for further investigation. Yes. Exact. I think I. It's required before you decide the treatment. Yes, yes. This, yes. this X-ray doesn't tell you exact morphology. Okay, so then it's a key. Further investigation. Yeah, you require CT scan or something okay, to know. Okay, I, I will describe the CT scan because I think I have not put it in the CT scan. We did a CT scan and shows there is a coronal shear fracture. Along with that, there is a lateral communication with posterior communication of the lateral condyle. I'm sorry that I, the x-ray, I have the CT, but I should not put it in this one because of the time. It's coronal shear, anterior shear fracture, distal, uh, distal humerus, with the mild, two weeks and 15 years. Yes, sir? He is almost like an adult now, adolescent. We are getting this communicated capitulum fractures with open reduction and like any other tibial conduct, open reduction, those mini plates, fine plates, 2.4, and if required, even graft them. If you are not uh, able to fill up the metal, we can avoid. But we construct the articular cut. Okay. Any and, other? And we have, we have followed them for more than two years and they don't go into a vascular network. So don't be afraid. Okay. Yes, sir? Open reduction. Another, another argument is that capitular teeth is in any case avascular. It has got no soft tissue attachment, but it rapidly revascularizes in few months in a non wet area. Yes, so I'm, I'm rushing through that. There is no controversy on that. We have gone into the open reduction and say for the it's one year following the surgery, the posterior piece is like that, but its range of motion is excellent. Yes, sir? Lateral approach. Before that, Sandeep will take over. This is the last case there. This is a 12-year-old boy presented with after trauma, two years following trauma.
and we'll have the what for that yes would li you like to have any other investigation or it's okay yes uh, the most of people have selected the third option is a uh, open reduction of radius and alna shorting yes, we agree. do you agree anybody differs on that yes it's a uh, most same thing was then when only additionally we have put on the radio alarm wire to because it was disrupted and it's got united after the three months and the one year following surgery so yes it must be risky but whatever we did shortening we have put the graft on that so it will be okay yes yes yeah. same level yes yes first we did the osteotomy of the alna and try to overlap and whatever amount of the overlap we have done for shortening okay now dr sandeep will take over for that thanks